Hi, my name is Mike Ward. I'm the Global Director of Content at Informa Farmer Intelligence's uh, 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 Insights Portfolio. Uh, we're here at, in San Francisco at the Biotech Showcase meeting. This is where, you know, one of those meetings where the sort of pharmaceutical industry and the biotech industry and investors all get together and have, have big discussions. Uh, I'm joined today by uh, Gab uh, Gabriel um, Berchi, who's the new CEO of Grunenthal, a, uh, a German uh, pharmaceutical company. So, um, welcome, Gabriel. Thanks, Mike. And uh, you've, you've been in post for, for three months, so you're still probably in the honeymoon period. Um, but it'd be kind of interesting to uh, understand what was it that you promised the board when they were uh, looking to, to hire you as the, as the new CEO? So, you know, um, the, the board mission was actually quite clear. It was growing the company, uh, replenishing the pipeline, transform the culture of, of the company. And I think now after three months, I get a, a sense of uh, what could be done. Uh, Grunthal is a 1.4 billion company and uh, we want to bring it by 2022 to about 2 billion. Uh, so it's pretty... Uh, so it's what, 15% growth? Yeah, and, and, and more importantly than the growth, I think, is the kind of products we want to bring to patients. We, we have the ambition to bring at least four new medical medicine to, uh, to patients by then. And uh, Grunthal is a pain-focused company. It's actually the pain company. It's one of the very few companies investing in, in pain and research and development in pain. And uh, we, we acquired uh, in the last quarter of the last year, which was making the, the, the start quite busy, Tau Pharmaceutical, which uh, uh, brought us a compound in complex regional pain syndrome, which is a, is a very, uh, you know, a, a disease which has a very high unmet need, medical need. There is no solution yet for those patients. And we, we have now two lead compound in, in, uh, in, in that segment. So it's, it's really exciting. So, so, the, so the, the, the company's so main focus is, is in pain. I mean, do you, do you intend to you know, maintain that focus or are you looking to look in, in, in other areas? So, you know, pain has a whole spectrum of diseases which are uh, close to it. I mean, inflammation, when you think about arthritis, you have pain, but you also have inflammation. So we are open to look at opportunities. And that's why I'm here which are in pain but also adjacent to pain. Uh, inflammation being one, uh, arthritis another one. Gout, for example, is another area where we're active as well. So I'm, uh, we're gout. pretty excited. Gout, yeah. Uh, yeah. A, a yeah. 19th century um, uh, condition. Yeah, yeah but we're, we're, there wasn't a lot of innovation in that space. And, uh, uh, you know, many patients still have uric acid levels which are too high, yeah. which then leads to uh, typhos and flares. And we want to bring. So we we have a product, Lesinorad, which we acquired from uh, AstraZeneca last year, which uh, uh, you know we're going to launch in 2017. So we're very active in business development. So yeah, so that 1.4. I mean, you said 1.4 billion euro uh, business. You want to grow it to 2 billion. That's right. Um, what, by what time frame was that? 2022. But 2022. Okay. So in five years. Five years. So so how are you going to do that? I mean, is it? Do organic growth, or are you going to have? So to it's going to be both. It's going to be both advancing our pipeline rapidly enough, especially this complex regional pain syndrome franchise, which is made of two products. We have a product called GRT 6010, which uh, we're developing bladder pain syndrome, and then of course we will need to have some uh, uh, inorganic opportunities uh, as well, which we're pursuing, and that's why I'm here. And uh, so far, exciting. I arrived this morning. Already had really good discussions and. Uh, there, there is a lot we can do. So you're looking to, so, so, you know, what would an ideal asset look look like? I mean, does it have to be sort of pretty well developed? Does it have to be already we, in the market? We, I think it needs to be bad. We, we personally, uh, we're looking at two different uh, uh, elements: early science, you know, phase one, which we can then develop because we have a really good development capability. Some companies which are subsized or are more discovery oriented don't have that, those skills or even sometimes big pharma actually i'm having discussions with big pharmaceutical companies which have you know preclinical clinical um, phase one project which uh, they are trying to give away because it's not part of their strategic portfolio so that's something we're very interested in but we're also in late stage uh, with these so unfortunately are not uh, as frequent and are more expensive but we, we are looking into that as well so you you came uh from astrazeneca that's right. uh, uh, originally um, and you had sort of uh, responsibilities for the sort of the Asia Pacific region will will that be um, a sort of a useful source you know the Asia Pacific for, for Grunenthal moving forward so you know as a company Grunenthal is trying to expand its uh, global footprint today we're very strong in Europe very strong in Latin America 
and I think the uh, the idea is to see how we can expand in the U.S. Definitely with uh, uh, through partnerships, but also partnerships from a commercial point of view, but also scientific point of view, but also Asia. I mean, uh, Japan. Today we have none of our product in uh, in Japan. And my last uh, post in AstraZeneca was in Japan, so I hope we can. Uh, we can develop, uh, uh, you know, our assets in, in the, for the Japanese market as well. Right. So you've been in place for for, for three months. Um, you know, what, what what sort of has given you time to sort of you know look and sort of see see what's there. What what kind of developments can we sort of you know, expect from Grunenthal over, over the next twelve months? So I think what you will see is that the company still focuses very much in pain. We're going to try to leverage our pain landscape. We have a very good understanding of those hundred sub-segment of pain, looking at partners in that. Uh, what you're going to see is the progress of our pipeline, especially in the uh, complex regional pain syndrome uh, uh, franchise. Uh, that's what you're going to see. And uh, you're going to see more deals uh, in, in, in that all the disease area which are adjacent to pain as well. That's, that's the objective. So because yeah, I think in 2016 the company actually accomplished quite a lot of deals. 39 deals yeah. in 2016. Which is like one every <laughs> 10 days. It has been a very, yeah. yeah. yeah it's a, the team has been working really hard and needed a break over Christmas, but now we're back in and... So do you sort of think it, it's going to be the same sort of... We have to, I mean, we have to. That's the ambition is to be maybe a bit more focused on things which are more transformative for the company, but we're going to continue to to be very active on the deal deal making. Okay, I, I can see the headline now. So like, you know, sits, looking for transformative deals. What would a transformative deal smell like or look like? Yeah. So it would be, for example, like what we did in uh, last year, uh, buying the uh, asset from AstraZeneca in gout. You know, yeah. giving us, today we have such a strong foot in, in pain. Yeah. Now we have a second foot in gout. What about the third one eventually, or uh, a presence in, in, in inflammation, uh, Duchenne uh, disease or Parkinson disease could be another area. This is what we, we're trying to do, something which gives us a presence in a disease area where we're not in yet, but which is very close to, to pain and the, uh, the CNS area, which we, we know very well. And the company's got enough finance to be able to, you know, um back that kind of deal? It's, it's a very strong uh, company from a financial perspective. You know, it's a family-owned company who takes uh, a very long-term perspective, has a lot of uh, own equity uh, uh, available and that makes my life easier as a CEO because I don't have the stress of the, of the stock market every quarter to deliver quarterly earnings. So it gives us a, a bit more flexibility on how, how to play around the P&L. Okay, okay. Well, Gabriel, thanks very much. Thanks, for Mike. Sharing the vision. Thank you. Thank you.